Welcome back to the performance video training series. In this video, we'll dive into building a new system in design mode. The purpose of design mode is to create a virtual representation of your system, so what you see in the workspace matches what's physically deployed in the field. When starting a new file, design mode is active by default, and the HControlID system view will be selected. To begin building, simply drag devices from the library into the workspace. After dropping a device in the workspace, a pop-up window will ask you to define various properties relating to the specific device being added. In this case, a line source product was added, and the pop-up box is asking how many arrays to create and how many devices each of those arrays should contain. For this example, there will be two arrays, one left and one right, and each array will have eight cabinets. Select Add, and the workspace will populate with the new arrays. Every array in performance belongs to a system group, a logical collection of one or more arrays that perform a similar function, like mains, fills, or subs. In this example, the system group represents the main PA, which includes both the left main and the right main arrays. To keep things organized, you can rename the system group and each individual array by double-clicking the group or array name in the header. All arrays within a system group share the same color bar, making it easy to visually identify which arrays belong together. Arrays and devices in the workspace can be rearranged by dragging them from the array header. There are many tools, keyboard shortcuts, and mouse gestures that make navigating performance faster and more intuitive. This icon is the zoom tool. Clicking it will zoom in on a selected item, or if nothing is selected, zoom out to show the entire venue layout. Pressing the spacebar does the same thing. You can also zoom in or out by holding the control key and scrolling, or pinching on an iPad or gesture enabled trackpad. To pan the workspace canvas, press and hold the middle mouse button or two finger drag on touch devices. The arrow keys will also move the view in any direction. Scrolling vertically moves the view up or down and holding the alt key while scrolling will pan the workspace side to side. When selecting items in the workspace, clicking and dragging from left to right creates a blue selection box and will only select items that are fully inside the box. Dragging from right to left creates a yellow selection box and will select everything the box touches. Alignment tools are available here and can be used to arrange selected devices. Hovering over any one of these tools will show a tooltip that explains what it does. To continue building out our example venue, Let's add a set of fill speakers. The process is the same. Drag the device type being used for the fill into the workspace. Because this is also a line source cabinet, we're given the same array options as before. This time, we'll add four arrays with one speaker in each. Select Add. Give the group a logical name. and arrange the fills where desired. The next step in our example is to add a subwoofer array. After dragging a subwoofer into the workspace, the configuration pop-up appears, this time with some additional options specific to the subwoofer model selected. First, choose whether the subwoofers will be stacked vertically or arranged horizontally in a row. Then, just like with line source arrays, to find how many arrays you need and how many subwoofers will be in each array. The last option determines whether all arrays should match. When this box is checked, each array will use the same device type, quantity, and orientation. If it's left unchecked, arrays can differ from one another based on the symmetry options. Click Add, position the arrays in the workspace, and rename the group. In this example, a ground-only subwoofer was used, but if a flyable model is added instead, an extra setting will appear, letting you choose whether the subwoofer should be flown or ground deployed. You can also create mixed arrays using compatible products. To do this, drag a compatible speaker from the library onto an existing array. A white line will appear, showing where the new device will be added. When an array or a device is selected in the workspace, the Properties panel on the right will display all configurable settings for that selection. Most of the controls shown here are also available in other views, which we'll cover later in this series. 
This panel is also where we manage symmetry between arrays in a system group. By default, symmetry is set to inside-outside, meaning DSP parameters like preset, gain, and delay are mirrored symmetrically from the center outward. If we change the symmetry mode to all, all arrays in the group will share identical DSP settings. When symmetry is set to off, each array in the group can be controlled independently. In this example, we want our front fills to match, so we'll set symmetry to all. It's important to note that changing symmetry to inside out or all will refactor the current DSP settings in the system group to align with that selection. Further down in the properties panel, we can adjust the number of arrays in each system group and the number of devices within each array. For mixed arrays, a separate quantity field appears for each device type. Note that device quantities can't be reduced below one. To remove a device entirely or delete an array, select it in the workspace and press the delete key. With the design now complete, this is a good time to save the file. In the next video, we'll look at setting device HCIDs and explore the other system views in design mode.